I'm going to hand things over to the host of today's press conference, Mr. John Rawling. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, thank you very much, everybody, for being here today uh, for a fight which, as far as I'm concerned, it's one of those fights that you really want to see. I love a fight where you go along and as a commentator or somebody who follows it, you really don't know what's going to happen. You don't know who's going to emerge victorious. And for me, that's what makes this one so special. And your promoter, of course, is Frank Warren. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us. Um, it is a special fight. You know, it's two young gladiators, uh, two of the best young prospects in the world, and they're laced in them up on Saturday. Uh, one's 11 and 0, 10 knockouts, and the other one's 16 and 0 with 11 knockouts. So they're both good punches, they're both good boxers, um, and I think we're going to see something special. I've read a lot about the styles of the fighters and and uh, so forth. But I think that I think the, the styles in this fight will, will make it a great fight for the fans. It's one which stands comparison with some of the uh, some of the terrific heavyweight battles of the past as well, and it has all the making of one which I think in years to come we could very well be looking back at and saying this is a, 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 was a very special night. We can. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I think the winner will go on. <coughs> In the next 12 months, and probably have another four or five fights, and probably put himself in a position of being a mandatory challenger for one of the belts. So there's a lot of stake, a lot at stake here for the winner. And of course, on the uh, on the undercard, another pretty tasty heavyweight battle as well. We ought to just you ought to maybe just uh, mention that one as well. Joe Joyce and Brian Jennings before we uh, before well, we move we're, on. We're promoting that fight in association with Ring Star Richard Schaefer and Joe is having his tenth fight on Saturday. It's fighting Brian Jennings, who's a former <coughs> world title challenger. Um, I think recently he was in he's, he was in the ring with Reavers, who's fighting uh, Dillian White yeah. the following Saturday and was winning that fight going into the twelfth round and he got clipped. Um, so it's a bit of, I think it's a big step up for Joe Joyce after nine professional fights. Um, he's got a wealth of amateur experience, but as we all know, the amateurs and the pros are totally different things. Right, well let's uh, hear from the lads who are involved on Saturday night. So I've got Nathan and Ricky Hatton to my left, and Daniel and Martin Bowers <coughs> to my right. And we'll start off with the, the voice from Manchester, Ricky Hatton. Tell us about uh, tell us about the preparations because it's been uh, it's been an interesting one for Nathan. He's had um, it's been a bit tricky to say the least. As you um, you're aware, at the start of the training camp, um, Nathan's two year old son had to have a, a cyst removed from his chest, which we was um, all extremely worried about. But obviously, you know that he's come through that. And that's fantastic now. And um, recently, he's just had another baby little girl on Monday. What it was, believe it or not, it should have been due Saturday. <laughs> so thank, thank, uh, thank God, he had it Monday. You know, so um, but yeah, um, training camp's gone really, really well. You know, he's in, he's in great shape. And um, as a as a trainer, I don't mean to speak for Nathan, he's been looking forward to this for a while. But I mean, for me, these are for the biggest people, Martin as well. These are fights you want to be involved in, and I'm sure it's the same with Daniel. Um, but Daniel, you know, you know. These are the lads you want to train. You know, it's our job as trainers and the, the managers and everything like that when a fight's like this to put forward his husband's to say, oh, hang on a minute. But there was no hesitation in Nathan, and that's those are the fighters you want to train. Why is there that certainty? Why does why has he always wanted this fight? I mean, we'll hear from Nathan in a moment, but from from a third party perspective, you know, is it is it true that almost from word go he's been saying, get me in? Well, you know, he, he he wanted this fight before he even met me. You know what I mean? And the first time I first time I asked him, I said, "What do you think?" Because obviously, you talk about future possible opponents, don't you? You know, we, we, we talk about you know a fight with Joe Joyce. You fight type, we talk about a fight with Daniel. The first time I asked him, "What do you think about Daniel?" He, I, I thought he was going to chin me. Oh, so I don't know what's gone on in history and everything like that. You know, a long time ago, but I think it's. Uh, I mean, obviously, they all, both the lads dream of becoming world champion one day. But I think um, he's, he's just always wanted this fight, you know. And, uh, and you can see he's always trained hard, he's always worked hard, but he's had an extra spring in his step, an extra little nastiness in his 
in his approach to this fight, and um, he always prepares 100%, but this one, he's, um, he's, he's put his foot down even further, you know, stone and turn, and it's been, uh, you know, I'm sure we always sit here and say the same thing, don't we, before every fight, he's had a great training camp, but honestly, he couldn't have been any better. We'll have a bit more from uh, Ricky and Nathan in a moment, but now uh, Martin Bowers, who's been <coughs> training Daniel throughout his career, you heard there that uh, they kind of knew from word go that somewhere down the line Daniel was going to be there. What about uh, what about Nathan from your perspective? Did you always realise that was going to happen? I think we always thought that was going to happen. And obviously, we didn't prepare for it until we actually got the fight and it was signed. And yeah. So how's he looking? He's looking bang on. Man of man of few words, isn't he? Is. How do you how do you how do you psych him up? Does he need psyching up? To be fair, you don't, you don't need to psych him up. He's he's a constant pro. He's always ready. He's always you know willing to do whatever he's got to be done. Nathan's a good talker. Ricky's a Ricky's a good talker. You're kind of the uh, probably a little bit more reserved. Uh, <coughs> probably a little bit more reserved, but everything they said has been spot on. I mean, we we knew that we'd cross this bridge sooner or later. Tell us about working with Daniel, what sort of a fighter he is to, to be associated with. Uh, well, it's, it's great to be associated with him. As you can see, he's a great athlete. He always puts the work in. But just as important, he has the days off. And we haven't left this in the gym. We're going to be ready and prepared. I'm sure Nathan and Ricky's team will be as well. So I think it's going to be a great fight. If I was a fan, I'd be excited. A lot of people are saying Daniel's power. Nathan's movement, boxing skills, do you see it that way or is it more than that? No, I mean, you know, you can only read into it what we've seen in the fight so far and obviously that's what plays out, but <clears throat> I think there's a lot more to both their games are. I don't think Nathan hasn't got any power and I don't think Nathan, uh, Daniel can't box. So I think it's going to be very interesting. I mean, I'd be glued to the telly. Or buying a ticket to be there. Or buying a ticket. Ricky's alluded to the fact that things might have gone on in, in the past and that they're not exactly buzz and buddies. What do you, uh, what do you reckon as far as Daniel's concerned? To be fair, we've never ever spoken at so... Literally? No. We're focusing on one thing going forward. <clears throat> as, a, as a professional in your gym, What's the what's the guy's work ethic like? How does he how does he apply himself to the to the to the skills that you're trying to put into it? Well, I, he's very diligent. I think, like most professional fighters, they actually all put the work in. I'm not going to say he works harder than anybody else, but he's always on time. Does everything you ask. And so far as you, as a trainer, is concerned, you know, some people have have already said to me, have said it to me here today. Is it going to be a factor that somebody who's been there and done it at the highest level as a fighter, as Ricky has, is that going to play out to Nathan's advantage? No, I don't believe so. I think that Ricky's not in the room, with all due respect to Ricky, who I've watched and loved his career and enjoyed it. This is two different boys. They're on two different missions. And you've been associated with some decent fighters yourself. Yeah. Well, luckily enough, I have. But you know, this is a different time. It's a different fight. I think we've got two really good athletes who are going to go for it. And I think it's a credit to British boxing, but more so I think it's a credit to the two boys. And I think whoever does win will be a champion. Frank, two again, I don't think the one who loses won't be a champion. Before we hear from the two fighters, I mean, these are two guys as trainers who've done terrific work with these lads. Well, they have, they, you know, but, um, I mean, their, their resumes speak for themselves. They are, they are in, in Effectively, two excellent trainers, and you, 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 as a promoter, they're the sort of guys you want fighters to be with because they, like you say, they know what they're doing and they're, they're resolute. Having said that, well, come Saturday night, they're both be stepping down, and these two guys are going to be in the ring. It's going to be about them too. So, all the preparation's done now. They've done all their sparring, they've done all their hard work, all the stuff that happens as amateurs. It's all irrelevant because this is professional. This is on Saturday night. This is these two just flaking <coughs> off, and, and, you, and I think you can see something special. You only got to look at them. Look, you know they're in, they're in magnificent shape. They're both, you know, mentally are there. They, they're, they're different type of characters. You know, Daniel's more introvert than, than Nathan is. But at the end of the day, it's as I say, you, you, it's, it's all on Saturday night. All that all goes out the window. Everything goes out the window once that first bell goes. It's going to be who can stick to their game plan, 
So both got their, they, I'm sure they both see weaknesses in each other, but who can stick to that game plan? Who can be the most resolute? And whose style is going to eventually win the fight for them? And uh, I, I read a lot, of, a lot into it, the way they talk about, you know, Nathan is a, a good boxer. He is a good boxer. He's a good <coughs> as well, he's a good puncher. Very good puncher, and, he's, and he's got great lateral movement. And I look at um, Daniel, who's a you know, and obviously you look at his resume again. He's a big puncher, but he can box. He's got a great jab, throws great, nice long shots. So this is going to be something. I really do feel this is going to be a special night for British heavyweight boxing or British boxing. It's going to be something great. Well, let's hear from the two lads and uh, Nathan. First of all, congratulations on the uh, arrival of. Uh, Little daughter and baby number two. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, John. Yeah, she's a little bundle of joy. You know, thankfully I was here to see her. You know, born. Uh, my Ricky says she was due to be on uh, Saturday on the, the five nights, so I was uh, hoping and praying for her to I come early. <laughs> <laughs> so I was hoping and praying for her to come early, and you know, thankfully it did. She come early. I was Tuesday morning at five in the morning, so I was with her for a couple of hours, and I shop up here now. So um, hopefully that's round the week off. Uh, Really good, and win the British title. Daniel, congratulations you on that. He was telling me, congratulations, he said, yeah. oh, she's keeping you up all night. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, that actually does sort of pave the way for a serious question. You know, we, we heard Ricky talking about your little son Nathan not being well yeah. earlier in the training camp, and now having become a, a dad again. Is, how, how much of a distraction has this all been? Oh, no, um, obviously, at the first begin with, with my little boy, you know, when. Uh, we found out he had, he had this cyst tumour on his chest. It was 10 weeks out. I only took two days off, you know, to get him operated and stuff. I was still training, you know, even at the, the office store, I was running around the car park and stuff. So my mind was still on the job. And obviously, with giving birth to my second born, my wife's looking after everything, you know. So I'm up here, I've got a job to do. My mind's fully focused on the Saturday night. There's no distractions. Like I've said numerous occasions before, Johnny, you know, there's, there's no excuses when I've uh, walked out of that arena. Every run's been run, every session's been done, you know what I mean? There's no stone unturned, I'm fully fit and ready to go. You look physically in, in great nick, but mentally are you absolutely oh, 100%, on it? Oh, 100%, 100%, definitely. Never been so fully on, on to it in my life than, than this one. So what sort of a fight can we anticipate so far as you're concerned on Saturday night? I think the people are in for a great fight. You know, um, I think the stars can flash really, really well. Like Frank was saying before, you know, Daniel's style and my style, I think, when, when we meet into the centre of the ring, I think we're in for a in for a big night. Daniel, you've uh, heard <coughs> Nathan and his uh, his problems, if you like, in the in the build up to this. What about uh, your run up to the fight? How's your preparations gone? Preparations has been well. It's been weeks and weeks of hard training, hard training, hard sparring, and it's I'm glad it's finally over now. Can finally get it on. Have you enjoyed being at the centre of the fight that people are speculating about and talking about? You know, you only need to go on, on Twitter and see that people are, are really into this fight and everybody has their opinions. First time you've really been in a fight like that. How's, uh, how's, how's it felt? It's good, you know, having a small spotlight on the, on the fight and me being the main event. It's, uh, it's new, so it's good and it's, it's something I look forward to. What sort of a fight do you think we can look forward to? Um, I'm, I know I'm going to be. I'm going to come out uh, first round, just fast, sharp. You know, just put all together what I've learned the years from the amateurs to now, what I've learned and what I've picked up in my my career so far. I'm just going to put all on on the line. You've had all those. Have you any idea how many rounds you might have sparred with Nathan in the past, back in the old no, TV squad no, days? No. You any idea how many it would be then? A lot, John. Well, on the other hand, it's three years ago. You know, there's a lot of water under the bridge there. You know what I mean? Obviously, mentally, <clears throat> you, can, you can pick things off them spars, but like Frank said, this is an amateur and this is professional. There's different ball games. And obviously, with the 10 ounce gloves on in front of all them thousands of people, it's a big, massive fight. The pressure's on. How do you think that it's going to be different now, Daniel? You know, I mean, you've heard in previous press conferences, Nathan saying that he was two years older than you and that he had the better of those spars. How do you think it's going to be different now, and how 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 is the professional game different to those days with the squad? It's a, it's a big difference. I'm sparring, and this is a fight. It's, it's 
you know, any fighter will tell you there's a massive difference between sparring and fighting. And on Saturday, we're going to, I'm going to put all on the line. I'm going to, you know, go in there, you know, focus and just do my job. How did you used to get on back in those days? I, you know, I'm, I'm a cool guy. I just mind my own business. I was, I was really just up there, just seeing where, where it would lead to. It's, um, it's been a journey so far, so it's um, all just experience. How does it feel seeing him, seeing him here now, two days before, <coughs> knowing that this is the fella who potentially can derail all the well-honed preparations and plans of the last couple of years? There's no worries. There's no worries at all. I've, I've, I've worked too hard. And I've put in a lot of work in the gym. I've, I've listened to you know, <coughs> the team and everyone around me. And I'm just um, ready to put it all on the line now. So what can you expect? Is it going to be another knockout, so far as you're concerned? Definitely, um, the opportunity is down well for the knockout. Nathan, that's his opinion of how it's going to go and what he thinks. Yeah. How do you remember those two, three, four years ago when you were back fight sparring as an amateur? Did you did you get on with it? Um, obviously, Will's two rivals, so we would never we can never be better at school. I knew for a certain fact. I mean, if we met, you know. He was in the same category as me. I thought we can't come, we can't be pally pally. But on the other hand, you know, we're completely different personalities. So we're, we're, we're not going to get, we're not going to be best buddies. But referring to the sparring, you know, I felt like I never lost a round. But back then, and this is now, you know, it's all it all comes down to Saturday night. So Saturday night, then you heard uh, his opinion of what he reckons is going to happen. I mean, this is we're <clears throat> seeing him at the way in tomorrow, but two days away. What can Daniel anticipate from you? Whatever he's got, John, to be honest with you, you know, we got the answer for. I've been through hell and back in training camp. I've got everything, everything what I've done, you know, been perfect. So whatever he's got, you know, I've got the answer for on my behalf. The knockout's there. I'm also going to go for it. If it goes 12 rounds, I'm more than fit enough to do 12 rounds. You know, I can box at a high pace, low pace, whatever pace he wants to go at. You know, I'm, I'm fully prepared and ready to do the job on Saturday. Ricky, is it the old boxing uh, adage of... Uh, you know, movement, hit and don't be hit, so far as Nathan's concerned. A little bit, I think. <clears throat> um, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's the same as we mentioned earlier, you know, probably the fighter versus the boxer type type thing. But, um, it, you know, he's a gorman. In the genes, he can fight. And, he, you know, when, when someone makes him fight, that's when, that's when he does. You know, a couple of times, you know, where... He's been he's been winning easy enough on points against people that are looking to survive. But once anyone's put it on him, whether it be sparring or fighting, he's not found wanting, and he's going to have to do that on. Um, you know, he's going to have to do that on. I mean, we're preparing for the toughest fight of our life. You know, goes without saying. We say it's the boxer versus the fighter, but I mean, Daniel has obviously got boxing ability. He was in the GB squad. You know, you don't get in the GB squad if you haven't got boxing ability. So we're we're not we're not stupid, just like. You know, the opposition, are, you know, we know it's uh, going to be a, a very tough fight, but I mean, you know, all me, when I, was a, when I was a fighter, you know, I never opened my mouth to sell tickets, I never said anything disrespectful to the opposition, I never said anything in order to worry the opposition, you know what I mean? I've said it straight as it is, and you know, nothing's changed as a trainer, I, you know, I, I, just, I just say honestly, it's not being disrespectful or anything like that, I think he's the winner. We saw, uh, and I don't, I don't talk rubbish, you know, and, and never have done. We've seen film uh, which has been released of, uh, of you uh, training training Nathan and, and Tyson, Tyson Fury being there at ringside, shouting encouragement and, and giving some tips. How important, you know, I mean, probably a question for both of you, how important has, uh, has Tyson's influence been in moving towards this night? I think it's been um, fantastic having him in my um, in my gym, and you know, the, you know, you know, the related Nathan and and Tyson, and it, it's it's fantastic to have someone like Tyson in the gym, you know, to to, to see him um, how he performs in training and to talk and to pick each other's brains, you know, you know that goes without saying, you know, I mean, it's uh, it's a great gym to be in. I think you know when you're training around quality fighters. I remember when I first turned professional in my team, there was. Carl Thompson and Lee Bingham, Steve Foster, Paul Burke, and the Oligers, you know, just to name a few. And just being around them every day it raises your, you know, again, you know, but soon, you know, the top and bottom of it, you can talk about the advice and the preparation that he's had and everything like that. 
you know, it's, you know, Tyson won't get in the ring with him, I won't get in the ring with him, you know, all them fighters, great fighters he's working with in the gym, Billy Sol Joe Saunders has been in our gym, all of us jump out and then it's left with him and Daniel and it's up to him, you know, to take the information that we're giving him and put it to practice. Martin, tell us, uh, sorry, tell us about uh, some of the people who, who Daniel's had around in, in the run up to this in, in your gym, you know, I mean, a lot made of, uh, of Tyson Fury. What about influences on Daniel? Influences on Daniel, well, obviously we had Frank Bruno come to the gym, but I don't think, as Ricky said, I don't think that's going to make any difference on the night. They're going to do this. Yeah, his Alex has been there and all, but I don't think that's going to make any difference. He's, he's took the information on board, he's worked very hard. That's it, we're ready and prepared, he's ready and prepared. It's going to come down to Nathan and Daniel. Daniel, tell us. And I believe bit, we've got the man. Tell us just a little bit about what, you know, when Frank came down to the gym and was with you, and uh, Frank telling me that Lennox Lewis has been in touch as well. Tell me a little bit about uh, what they've had to say to <coughs> Well, uh, Frank, he came down, you know, he gave me a few tips, and um, I'm not going to go into it, but, you know, he came down, and it was good to see a guy that's been there and done it, done it and, you know, he's, He's had the award and he's a, he's a, you know, an old gladiator, to say. And, you know, it's, it's good having him around, going on the pads and having him move around and stuff like that. But, and, you know, obviously Lennox as well. It's no big deal, you know. Um, coming down to it, it's all down to me. I've, I've, I'm the one that's going to be in the ring and, you know, putting on the gloves and going out there and, and winning the fight. So it's all on me. How much do you admire those two guys and see them as sort of role models, people that you'd aspire to be in the future? Look at, you know, I, I always look back on them, them two careers. They uh, had a big influence on my dad as well. And I always, I always look back on them and I'm, and I'm always reminded about them. So it's, it's constantly in my mind. It's, it's funny, they're both come from fighting families. You, know, you think of sister and brothers. Yeah. Same with. Nathan, they, they, they got popped in their blood. That's what that's about. They need to be true fighters. It's, uh, it's, it's going to be a, a, a special one, and I don't think that we're going to hear too much bad mouthing from the two lads about as, as much, much as you try. As much as you try. It's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, they've got respect for each other. You don't have to throw tables over and jump about to create a good fight. These guys, these guys are good fighters. They don't need to sell themselves. And you're going to see something special on Saturday. So be there, watch it. Don't blink, because I think you're going to see some, some serious fireworks. Yeah, watch it on BT Sports if you can't buy a ticket and be there. Uh, let's just open it up to the, to the floor now. You've got uh, all the lads here, trainers and fighters. Any questions before we go to the head-to-heads? Shouts about it, please. Anybody? Daniel, who are you inspiring with? I've, I've done a few rounds with him. Martin McCauley, I've hired him for about two weeks. And just amateurs and a few, you know, a few amateurs have come in, a few amateurs have away, so it's a lot to come so I've had good sparring. Daniel, why do you claim Nathan Gorman was the easiest part of your career? I'll show you on the night. Nathan, what do you make of Nathan Gorman was the Time will tell, Monet. We'll find out. We've got two more sleeps. <laughs> Time will tell exactly. Do you think you'll ever be friends? You tell me boxers after they fought, pick up friends after, look at hey, she's all there. Yeah. You, you don't know in boxing, do you? Never say never, but at this moment in time, I'm sure you will agree if we want to kill each other. So never say never, but time will tell. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> But you listen again, it's such a great fight, a rematch, who knows what happens in the in your trilogy, who knows what's going on. One thing for certain, the respect will be there, isn't it? Yeah, it's always the case when you share the ring. They're respectful, and that's what, that's what it's all about. Proper good guy. And it's not the end of the world for the loser. You know, think about it, similar situation again, we talk about Tyson, Derek Chisora, Derek Chisora went, went on and had, how many, how many title fights after that? You look at uh, James Gale, Jack, George, George, Groves. Groves, George Groves, both of them went on to win world titles. So at this stage of the game, it, it's a fight that they'll learn from as well. And they're young men and they can, and the loser can come again.